Well, hello, hello there, there. It's Sandy Alma folks. with this month's Creating Color for November of 2020, which means we're doing a Christmas card because I have been Christmas card mode for sure. I hope you are and that you're getting to the end of your list. You can start writing them out around Thanksgiving weekend, maybe. And I'm going to use this sweet new stamp set designed by the amazing Stacy. I love her illustrations. It has a tree line in it that I'm not going to use, but you could also use it with that and do the same kind of card that I'm doing. And I'm going to be painting with Daniel Smith watercolors using a silver brush number eight for this portion of it. And I'm going to be using Arches cold press watercolor paper. I'm painting with a very thin mix of watercolor for this first part so that my bunny is light and then adding a little bit of the black to it. It's a new the color's called neutral tint adding some of that to mix more of the paint, but it's mixed darker because that's a shadow area down there and I wanted it thicker. So I can also take that same mix and add a little bit of it into the wet paint that's already down there from the earlier wash. And it starts to build that roundness of the image going from light on the left to darker on the right. You can also rinse your brush, clean it off, dry it on a paper towel, not real dry, just get the worst of it off and then move the brush around while it's just damp in the highlight area and get things to smooth out a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing on the tummy and just move that color around so that it doesn't end up with a hard edge. Now watch it with your eyeballs while you're painting the next thing because as paint dries it could end up with hard edges and it's easier to fix if you can use a damp brush to kind of work into those areas before they get completely dry. But notice how the thicker paint, this is the same color, can be black if it's mixed without much water in it. The puddle next to it is a light gray, but the, the little smudge there is, is the darker black. I'm gonna be using my browns in the same way. First, I mix the brown with some water so that I had a thinner mix. I'm gonna put the thinner mix down over the whole bit of, of tree bark down here at the bottom. I'm waiting to do the top part of it because I'm waiting for the gray to dry a little bit more just so that the brown doesn't leach up into any wet paint. And then I'm gonna go straight from the palette in the same color right onto the paper. That's gonna give me that thicker paint again, just like I did with the penguin and I can drop that color into the wet paint. And I'm dropping it in on that edge below the top so that I'm gonna get a difference between the color on the top and the color on the bottom, as well as I'm getting some texture because I'm mixing the thicker paint and the thinner paint. But I'll use a little bit of it to add some cocoa to the little bunny's cup and give it a quick dry with some heat and then we're gonna move on to painting some of the other details. I'm gonna use some Aussie red gold for the little feet and the beak and then the cups. Just trying to unify things a little bit by using some of the same colors a few times and move on from there to painting the hats and things. Now, the hat doesn't touch any of the gold paint that I put down there, so I can go ahead and move forward with that without drying it. I was thinking about that carefully because the number of times that I've had one color of paint leach into something else is kind of off the charts. In my fine art painting, when I paint a big thing, I take advantage of that and I try to deliberately do that. And it's really hard to make myself be patient or wait for things to dry when I'm making cards. So I painted the bunny scarf, even though it's got a crosshatch texture in it, I decided I was only gonna do a solid red scarf because it's just too hard with watercolor to get into all those little spaces. And then I used a little bit of quinacridone pink on his ears and the bottoms of his little toes. And now for the background, I'm gonna slow it down to real time so you can see how this really works. And notice that I'm using a number 12 brush. It's a really big brush. A lot of people don't wanna use a really big brush on a card, it's kind of scary. But the reason is because when you're painting a large area, everything needs to stay about the same wetness. If you want it all to be the same color and not have any bleed marks and dried spots and weird things going on, the paint has to stay about the same wetness. And that includes the edges. That top left edge 
as I was painting this right section, I was looking at that top left edge waiting to make sure that it doesn't look like from an angle that it's getting too dry. Because if that edge dries, I'm going to end up with a hard line there. And, you know, any anytime I stop, anytime I slow down, that's going to risk any of those edges getting wet. See, I just took my brush and wet that area so that that any any paint in there would stay wet as I was trying to mix up more color because I knew I was running out of color. So I made sure before I moved on to mix the color that I just took a quick stroke across that edge so that it would remain wet. I did go back in a little bit with my brush. Now this is a danger moment because if you have too much water in your brush, you could add blooms to this at this time. So I ended up just having my brush using whatever color was in it that I can dip from the palette itself. So I'm putting the same color back into the same color. I'm not using a different mixture. So then I use the rest of the paint that's down there for the snow at the bottom and just started taking my brush and laying it completely on its side and tapping so I could get a little bit of dry brush. And dry brush is when the brush skips across the bumpy surface of the paper and you get this just sort of really interesting broken texture. And so I, I have that all over everything, which looks like little footprints now in the snow, little divots. And one thing that I like to do is have darker color in the foreground so it kind of pushes you into the picture. So I put a little dark blue down at the bottom. Now this paper is bigger than I'm going to need it for my card, so I'm probably gonna trim some of that off, but I'm okay with that. Just had a little bit of darker color. Now looking at that sky, there's a few spots that it's not absolutely perfect. Now it's darn close. If you were to draw snow on that with a white pen, you could easily hide any of that. But I'm gonna show you a painted solution for that as well. See, there's a spot here by his ear and then a little bit down there at the horizon line. You can hide that by painting another element in the background. And I'm just gonna paint some trees back here. And I'm gonna make sure that they cover any of those areas that had some imperfection in them. Now, don't think that this is imperfection. I would be perfectly happy sending this card out just as is. But if you want to cover something up, think about adding a little tree to something. That little tree is gonna do a lot of hard work in distracting people because they're gonna be like, oh, look at that beautiful scene they painted, as opposed to noticing any blooms or blossoms that you're covering. It does take some brush control to do something like this though. So be aware of that. It's a great thing to practice on any reject. So if you have any reject cards that just everything went wrong on them, just use a corner of it to practice making little trees. Play around with what kind of paint mixture works best because for your hand and your brush, you may have a brush that works really well doing those kinds of lines with thin paint. Other people might want thicker paint. Really depends on a lot of different factors. Now I'm also going to add in something else, which is here's another idea. If you have a train wreck that happens on one of your backgrounds, it has happened to many of mine. If you look at any of my cards, you may notice that there's all kinds of things I'm hiding. Well here, I'm just gonna put a really big tree in and I'm gonna put it in the foreground by making the tree trunk come down below the horizon line. And that pulls that tree forward. So then all those trees in the background start to feel lighter and they feel like they're more in the distance because I've got this tree in the foreground. So I painted this tree in the foreground. I wasn't really happy with it. My lines weren't great, but I squeezed out a little bit of titanium white just over there on the tape. I don't keep it in my palette because it just gets too muddy and messy and dirty and it's really hard to do that. So I always keep a tube of it around and then just use a little squirt of it when I'm gonna paint something and, and need some little snow added to it. And the thickness of this paint is, you know, right out of the tube kind of thick, which means I'm getting a really nice dry brush look on top of these branches of the tree. When I paint over top of them, then the clunkiness of the tree branch kind of disappears because now it's broken up by all that snow. It also lightens the whole thing so that the focus returns to the stamped image in the foreground. And that tree just becomes a nice element in the background. You can add all kinds of little tiny extra branches, little dollops of snow. You could paint snow in the sky. And this is this is one card I think I'm not gonna paint snow in the sky, just for something different, because everything in my world has snow all over it right now. But paint like this is another way that you can do snow. You could also do it with a white pen. 
that sort of thing. And I'll paint even right over that tree branch. And then I'll do a little bit of dry brush right along where the snow meets the tree stump that they're sitting on. It's going to roughen up that edge, just make it look a little more realistic. And see if there's any other areas you want to use that white paint before you take the tape off, because then that white paint will go away. That's why you want to make sure you don't put a ton of it out there, but a little dollop of it does an amazing job on a greeting card. My planning left a lot to be desired on this card because I needed to use the birthday sentiment, but I left the tree in the way. I couldn't read it when I stamped it on the card, so I just re-stamped it on a panel and popped it on top. Because this has to be a birthday card. It's for my mom. Her birthday's on Christmas, and she loves bunnies. So that's going to be her card. I also want to invite you to come join me on Facebook this evening. Yes, Friday the 13th. We're going to make it a good and lucky day at 5 o'clock my time. 8 o'clock Eastern time and whatever time it is, wherever you're in the world, you can download the image and the sentiment from MFT, from the blog page. However, I'm going to be watercoloring and unless your printer can print on watercolor paper with waterproof ink, you'll need to choose a different medium. But you're in luck because I have a video showing how to do this over on my YouTube channel from a couple weeks ago. And I'm going to be translating all that Copic information into watercolor information so you can watch that video before you come. And I am going to be talking about additional information during the live video about making snow and trees and that sort of thing. So do come to that even if you watch that other video. And there's also giveaways. So you want to go join the live broadcast anyway, right? And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there. And I'm glad that you stopped by here to see my video on painting this beautiful little bunny card. I hope my mom enjoys it for her birthday. Have a great day, a great month. I'll see you again in December with more, and I'll see you on Facebook this evening. Details are on the blog. Bye-bye.